I am a huge, huge fan of the original OEM Yamaha rear rack for the Tenere 700, mainly because it makes moving the bike around a lot easier because of the big grab handles. Also gives the passenger a couple of handles to grab onto. And if you're just taking a short lead trip to the store, it's a little bit easier to lash things down to the rack than it is to just lash it down to the tie down bolts on the side of or next to the seat. I'm also a huge fan of aluminum or <laughs> aluminum side cases. It kind of, it's, I like the cool look of them. I'm not a big fan of the top case nor the tank bag, but they really, really provide added luggage space. But on the market today, there is zero solution for the, having the big rear rack and having side cases. So if you want to have both, you're gonna to have to modify both the top rack and the side case carriers. The reason being is that both the top rack and the side case carriers are fastened to the same mounting points on the bike. So they're taking up the same real estate space. The original top and side cases for the Yamaha Tenere 700s are made by GV. And so the top rack already comes with the fastening points for the GV top case. So with the Yamaha OAM system, you can either have the aluminum top case or the aluminum side cases, but you cannot have both. So Yamaha is obviously taking the luggage part of the adventure bike to the extreme, where you just like in the old west, you just roll up your woolen blanket and the canvas, strap it to the back of your transportation, and go for a ride. I wanted the GV Alaska cases because the tie downs are molded into the corners of the cases and they have uh, minimized the amount of fasteners etc so there's ch less chances of water leaks. The GV Dolomiti range of cases with its rounded corners matches visually better the Touratec forged skid plate so today I might have bought those instead but as just from a pure visual aspect. The GV case racks for the Alaska cases is the PLO2145MK. A small angle grinder with a thin cutting disc, a grinding disc, a flat file, a round file, three different drill bits. It's, I used a 3 quarter inch, 3 8 inch, and then the step drill and of course a little bit of time patience and some black paint semi gloss is probably the correct choice but i had a box of flat spray paint laying around on the top rack the four mounting points at the top needs to be modified the four mounting points at the bottom is optional to modify the side case racks are mounted straight to the bike and then the top rack is mounted on top of the side case racks. The parts that needs modification is where the top rack meets the side case racks. The two side case racks, they take up the space of the pipe barrels. The top rack is fastened to the tie down mounting points next to the rear seat. And it has is fastened through with bolts through little pipe collars. Two of them are permanently mounted, or welded onto the rack, and two of them are loose. So the first part is to use a thin cutting bl blade on an angle grinder, or just use a hacksaw, and just cutting off the two permanently mounted little pipe collars on the rack. Just cut them off as shown, it's where you leave the beveled edge in place. An extra bevel facing the bottom of all these four fastening points needs to be cut. You can either do that with an angle grinder or just a flat file. The bevel should be roughly 45 degrees parallel to the bodywork and it should start roughly from the mounting hole and then just go back. Originally the bottom part of the rack is fastened with two 6mm diameter bolts per side the side case carries was fastened with one 8 mm bolts. So in the beginning I just enlarged one of the holes to 8 mm and then later on I enlarged all the four oval holes to accept 8 mm bolts. The two brackets that came with the top rack is being used, not the one that came with the side carriers. 
The four mounting holes were enlarged with a 3 8 inch drill bit that's 9.5 millimeters. And I learned a long time ago trying to make things too exact that just backfires. So it's always better to have a little bit of leeway. That's why the holes are bigger than 8 millimeters. <laughs> the four 6 millimeter bolts, they were changed to 8 millimeters because it looks way better. And of course, they were spray painted black. The bracket is situated in between the rear foot pegs and the frame. It connects the side case carrier and the top rack with the two 8mm bolts, or you can just use the standard 6mm bolts. The top rack is mounted on the outside of the bracket, and the side case carrier is mounted on the inside of the bracket. A 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter drill bit is used to remove the outside of the little ears of the case racks. The outside surface of all the four ears on the side case carriers should be flat and in order to do so you need an end mill cutter. In order to get a perfect result, you need a 3 quarter inch end mill cutter on a bench top or a stationary drill press. I used a half inch end mill cutter and that's not really the way to go. When you cut down the pipes on the outside of the ears, there will be a little gap and it's not necessary to fill it in with welds. All you do then is just to get extra work because you have to file and grind it back down. So this is the rear rack on top of the air for the side case carrier. A little bit of walking will be required between your bike and your workbench in order to get everything to fit. You can save a little bit of time by keeping the 6mm bolts in place and also by making sure that you have sharp tools. I really, really like this setup and I've used it quite a bit. It's just a shame that you cannot buy it ready-made. Thanks for watching. Have a good safe ride. Please subscribe. More videos to follow.